Guys, what's up? Josh, I'm back. And if you've got a Mazda 6 or any type of Mazda product and say you've got an ugly interior like mine, that's ugly gross cloth which shows all the stains and it just looks dingy and gross, makes the car feel cheap and old, and uh, you want to switch to leather interior, I'm going to show you how to do that. My original idea I was trying to order uh, OEM Mazda Grand Touring uh, leather from eBay so I ordered like this bottom from one customer or ordered the top from a customer I ordered all the seats from another seller and eventually I just couldn't find the rest of the interior to match so I've got like half of the interior done and I was unable to find the rest of the pieces for like the last year all I could find was the touring instead of the grand touring so I've got a road wire kit and uh we're going to install that and see what it looks like. And it uh, replaces these door inserts as well as all the leather seats, the headrests, and everything. And where the Grand Touring, this is like a synthetic leather. The road wire is, is real leather, just like the OEM Mazda stuff. First thing we got to do is remove the factory seats. And if you guys don't have Torx adapters, you're going to need Torx to get that off. Uh, I found out the hard time or the hard way last time so I had to order those and I'll have a link in the description down below if you guys are interested in the same torque socket set that I've got you're gonna need it for this car so this has all the different types of sizes and it has a uh, female as well so if you need female or male either way so for Mazda you're gonna need an E12 both the driver and the passenger seat please Take your time on all these connectors to um, disconnect them without damaging them. These are for the airbag as well as the uh, like the weight that's in the seat for the airbag. So don't damage these. Otherwise, you're going to get a flashing airbag light. And those are expensive items to replace. So I'll disconnect that. And for this plug, all you got to do is easily put a flathead in here and give it a little twist. It'll just pop right out. So it works a little easier if you disconnect that from the seat and then once you pull that plastic pin out you can just depress this little plastic piece here with your fingernail and then that'll allow you to pull the main harness off. We've got both seats in the house. Let's go ahead and open up our road wire letter kit and show you guys the difference. Alright, I've got everything opened up and you can see you've got all the new headliners. There's four for the main seats. You've got the one little center one for the rear. Stitching on these look really nice. Um, they're really soft. There's really good padding on the inside of them. Like that foam stuff. Um, these are all for the door cards. This is just uh, vinyl, so it's the leather look-alike. And according to the ad, I believe it said that these are leather, so to me, it feels like this part is leather, and then it feels like the outer outer edges are vinyl. Uh, but you can see you got nice perforated leather, nice red stitching. It's got all the factory markings for your seat belts for the latch. Uh, let's go ahead and compare. So even like your airbag, road wire, road wire airbag leather interiors it feels really soft it feels a lot softer than the the stock like this is a lot harder leather compared to this maybe just because it's old versus this is new but let's look at it on the inside so i've got this one zipped and you can see they do a really good job putting like all the extra foam padding so that gives it that extra like comfort when you sit down in there this is your retention little bag for your airbag and then these just zip up and they look all like stock from the back. But obviously you can tell that the rear is vinyl versus the front. This is leather here and here and then vinyl on the sides and the back. See the difference in like the wrinkles and stuff. Yep, smells good, looks good. So let's just compare. So this is your Grand Touring leather, which does look really nice versus the road wire. I think it's gonna look nicer. It looks like it's a step beyond this. Like that shiny versus this looks like nice plush leather. More of like a uh, Napa leather look versus the cloth. So let's go ahead. 
I'll uh, get this kind of all torn down and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, for the install. And then all you're going to need to install this is some hog rings and some hog ring pliers to crimp everything onto the factory seat. Uh, minus, so I got to connect, disconnect the airbag as well. The underbody of the seat, same thing, just a little plastic piece, just uncovers just like that. It's going to review or reveal your underwiring so you can disconnect this harness, slip it up and through, and then get it out and underneath. You can just put a flathead right through this adapter or this little pin here, and then you can pull the plug out. And then you use a uh, panel popper tool to pop that wire off. And then we'll be good to pull off the bottom seat cover. There we go. Pop that right off. And then we can bring the wire back up through the seat cover without damaging anything. As far as removing the seat cover from the lower part of the seat, there's just little plastic pieces that connect on around the seat cover. So we'll pull all those off and then the seat cover cushion will just pull right off. And then we can begin cutting all the uh, all the uh, metal clips off to remove the cloth from the seat cover. Could put some needle nose pliers on here, and you can kind of just pull that plastic lip out of way from the uh, seat, and then work it off just like that. Right, you have a screw down in here that you need to remove. Then you can work this little side piece out, then you can get the seat cover up and over. And then from there, we'll just pull it right out. The only thing holding it on is just the little back piece needs to come up through here. And you can see the rear cushion retainer is this little plastic piece here that clips on. So all you gotta do is pull it out in a way. And then we can Take the cover right out, just like that. From there, you gotta take the hog rings out and then put the new cover on. Once you get the seat cover kind of removed, you can see that these are the hog rings that we need to cut out down here. So you've got quite a few all the way around the seat. So we'll just kind of cut those off all the way around and work our way to getting the cover off and then we can re reapply the, uh, the new one. So here's a good look at how it works. So you got all these little, basically metal rods that run through the center of the seat and your hog rings basically just connect onto that. So it's secured to the foam. So here's our new seat cover. It's gonna look something like that. It's gonna look so nice. So you guys kind of get the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hog ring all those in there and show you what it looks like when I'm done. And these road wire covers are made in Mexico, just so you guys know. The big difference I see as far as uh, quality, the OEM ones, they're all punched out for your hog rings to go in. Where this one, I guess you could easily just poke through here. Or I could spend time with like a hand hole puncher and go around all the little areas like this where it's gonna connect. So basically what I'm doing here is with every single little hog ring connection point, I'm just taking the uh, the hog ring pliers. You can just push the, uh, the sharp point right through the seat cover. And then you just push it right down underneath and crimp it on. Pretty simple, just keep on working all the way around. So I'm gonna connect all this whole thing and then I'll catch up with you guys here in a few minutes to show you what this cover looks like attached. And we're just gonna work our way forward here. So the back section's on. We'll go this section, this section, and then the outer section's on the side, and then this is done. I'm gonna have to buy myself more hog rings. I think I only have like 100 here. I don't think that's gonna be enough to do this whole, this whole setup. All right, I'm 
down to the last three hog rings here on this seat. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of crimping them down a little bit. And that allows me to easily kind of grab the seat cover and kind of line it up where I need it to be. And then I can bring it down into the seat. And then just crimp it into position. That seems to be working easier than going in with one that's shaped like that because you can't really maneuver it the way you need. And then just uh, take the little side piece, bend it down around the middle piece there and underneath. Stretches all the side out. All right, so I've got the uh, rear seat cover all stripped off and you can see going from black to or the cream to the white i'm gonna have to replace the little top pieces that go basically under the headrest here i've already replaced them on the passenger side so i gotta order some for the driver's side okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get this prepped for installation and you're just gonna unzip it basically it's just the exact same process as Removing the factory one. So we'll get it slipped over and then work our way down and start using the hog rings and tying it into spot. You can see it's gonna look it's gonna look something like that. Nothing better than working on my car and Enjoying myself a beer. That's my favorite. <sighs> Alright, when you get to the bottom, it gets a little challenging because it gets a little tight. So I'm just working my way down the sides. All right, we've got uh, the seat covers mostly dialed in here on this one. Um, just getting ready to put the headrest on. And you can see that they didn't have the, uh, the covers cut in this. So I'm just gonna feel where the spot is. Just poke a hole. That is in. Let's go ahead and slip the E. And just slowly, what I did is kind of get this all spongy, kind of worked in. It's like that, kind of a pain in the butt. But it is doable. They're really tight. All right, this is a uh, seat cover over the actual uh, cover of the headrest. And it looks so much nicer. It was super challenging to get on there. It was so tight. So the factory seat cover had like a plastic clip that went over the airbag that bolted into the actual seat, like pushed into the metal. This just has a uh, couple of fasteners that wrap around the, uh, the actual seat cushion. And then there's a clasp that just kind of clicks into position. So I actually like that a little bit better. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is just kind of cut the side of the seat cover for the uh, lumbar support and then we are done. The back of this cover all buttoned up, all the power cords, seat belt cords, everything, underside is all tucked in, fits really nice just like factory. This all clips together, looks really nice zippers and everything, so let's go set this in. Here's a good look at the new leather interior. So it's installed, it's really nice and plush. I mean, look at the flex. I like the perforated holes that are a little bit bigger than the stock stuff. Um, it doesn't quite fit per perfectly. You can see there's a little 
uh, imperfection in the way they stitched it here. Same thing right here, you can see where the line goes crooked. But otherwise, at first glance, most people probably won't notice. I've got all the hog rings on here really good on this side. I don't feel like I got them as tight on this side because it's kind of a little bunched up. Same thing here. Like these needed to be, I feel like I got this slightly out of alignment when I hog ringed it on, but it's the first seat I did. It took me about five hours. Looks really good. I got to order a black lever here. And uh, here's a good look at the the OEM leather. I just put the factory seat back in. I'm gonna pull the covers off next week. But here's a difference in like the the leather is hard. You can see it doesn't really flex. It's hard, kind of more plasticky feeling. Um, the holes are smaller versus. Like this is really nice and plush. The holes are bigger, so I think this is gonna be a little bit cooler in the summer. And it smells great. Let's take a good look at the back. So the back finished up real nice. Looks good, matte pockets and everything. Here's a good look at the back seat so you can kind of see the cloth. It's in a little bit better condition, but it's just a ugly color, just tan, pinstriped. I feel like it's some uh, grandpa's car on the inside. And I think the seat feels really comfortable. And I'm happy that I give it a big thumbs up. As I spent most of my time detailing the car, being that I have to work uh, the next couple days, so I don't want to tear into the back seat. But the front seat's done. Uh, hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. My car looks good. It's been washed, ceramic coated, and I went ahead and rain next all the windshield, windows, and everything. So it'd be nice for me to drive during the rest of the rainy season. Still waiting on the catch can for the GTR, the Nismo one. I haven't even touched the Silvia. I probably won't start working on it until spring. Just have too many different things going on right now. Guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. I'll be back with a second video of me reupholstering the back seat. So if you guys would like to join me for that process and kind of watch me fumble through uh, how to do it, I'll uh, at least give you some information. So when you go ahead to do your interior swap, it should be that much easier for you. And then uh, I'll be back with the third video probably of me just finishing off the door cards and then finishing off this passenger seat. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.